ardent advocate for the protection of New Hampshire's lakes, mountains, and forests. Wind farms and the, protection, or, and the Northern Pass are, of course, two projects adversely affecting the environment in this area, which are also receiving intense opposition. Although both energy projects purport to be environmentally sound, they clearly are not, and are also detrimentally affecting property values. The dams put in place by Hydroelectric, uh, or Hydro-Quebec rather, have negatively impacted parts of Canada's river ecosystem and property values along the projected routes uh, have already dropped significantly. For these reasons, I'm adamantly uh, against Northern Pass and the wind farm projects. As a state legislator, I would certainly work to pursue sustainable and clean energy options, but not in such a way as to neg negatively affect the, imp uh, the people living in the areas where they're being implemented. Engaging and cooperating with young people in opposition to these environmentally damaging energy projects, and for the purpose of encouraging new or a new generation of environmentally conscious and civically engaged people, is also a key point of my candidacy. Clearly, as a young person seeking elected office, I'm hoping to demonstrate to young, young and old people alike that young people can have an active and positive role in politics and government. In the State House, I would seek to leverage my youthfulness and enthusiasm for the purpose of bringing legislators together across party lines. New Hampshire state government must function in a cooperative way to ensure that the proper social framework and services that will enable the success of our state's children and younger generations. By tapping into the independent spirit so prevalent throughout our state and using that in conjunction with youth, youthful calls for cooperation and responsibility, I believe I can be a very effective voice in the New Hampshire State House. In addition to environmental protection, one of the primary things I would use my voice in the State House for would be to work to find ways to draw more businesses to the, to the state and pr promote sustainable economic growth. In order to attract and retain young people and young families in New Hampshire, I will work to ensure that there are well-paying and desirable jobs in ideal business conditions. By providing the economic incentive and envi environment for young people and families to succeed, New Hampshire can grow economically and continue to be a wonderful state to live in. As a lifelong New Hampshire resident, I look forward to hopefully for serving in our state's government as a representative for the people of Plymouth, Holderness, and Hebron. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Uh, now, Suzanne Smith, please. Thank you. Your three minutes. I am Suzanne Smith. I live in Hebron, and I represent the towns of Plymouth, Hebron, and Holderness. I'm finishing my sixth year in the New Hampshire legislature. I serve on the Resources, Recreation, and Development Committee, a committee that works four issues and across party lines to get things done, whether we're debating the eradication of milfoil or state park funding. Energy. What it is, where it comes from, and how it's transported through our state are very important issues. We must have strict criteria for the siting of all energy projects, whether wind, northern pass, or natural gas pipelines. We must bury northern pass. The ridge lines which abut Mount Cardigan and flank Newfound Lake are not appropriate for further industrial wind development. Our top priorities should be making our homes and our businesses more energy efficient and implementing and supporting local sustainable energy solutions such as rooftop solar. For all the money trying, spent trying to push giant industrial projects on the area, every home in northern New Hampshire could be buttoned up so that less energy is needed. There are no silver bullets to solve New England's high energy costs. Building new infrastructure will take years, but by improving energy efficiency we can lower our electric costs right now. When it comes to the health of our state, prevention is the best medicine. When more people have health care coverage, fewer people will use emergency rooms as their primary care doctors, and our jails will not overflow with people who actually need behavioral health and substance abuse counseling and treatment. Prevention works and costs our state less than the alternative. Since implementation of the New Hampshire Health Protection Program in August, which was voted for on a strong bipartisan vote, over 19,000 low-income people previously ineligible for Medicaid have signed up for health care. This number is well above what was estimated for such a short period of time. Further proof that the people of New Hampshire want and need health care security. This program is 100% funded with federal money, money that comes from our income tax that we pay to the federal government. I support public education, kindergarten, high school, and, all, and higher education. All high school students should have the opportunity to further their education, whether at a local technical college, a community college, or the university system. Many companies in New Hampshire hire out-of-state employees because they can't find qualified workers here. 
that's unconscionable and I will continue to work to ex for access to public education and will fight any cuts. Finally, regardless of income, religious, ethnicity, social standing, or sexual preference, all the people of New Hampshire deserve to be treated fairly and with respect. I will work to keep civility in state government and fight for these issues. I ask for your vote, and I thank you for the trust you've shown in me. Thank you, Suzanne. And Mary Cooney is next. Thank you. Um, I can start right off by saying I agree with everything Travis and Suzanne said, <laughs> and I'd like to um, say that I have enjoyed serving you for 14 years, and I was elected in 2000. It's been an incredible educational experience that I would recommend to anyone who is interested in the political process. It can be very frustrating, but rewarding experience. My last four years has been on the Ways and Means Committee. This committee evaluates all bills which raise revenue or has an effect on revenue. The first year is spent estimating revenue for the next two years in concert with the Finance Committee, which will use those figures to craft a budget. I will be giving you my overall view of New Hampshire rather than specific stands on issues. I feel there is a lack of vision in New Hampshire. Ever since I was first elected, New Hampshire has struggled to meet the basic needs of the state, education, Medicaid, mental health, services for children and adults in need, and departments which control essential state services. The search for new revenue in the face of lawsuits has been limited to the advocacy of gambling. We are always looking for a free lunch. The extensive legislative research over the last decade has only solidified my opinion that gambling is very wrong for New Hampshire in many ways and would suck the life out of surrounding businesses and incomes for those who can least afford to lose it. It is a subject which would take hours to discuss. New Hampshire is 50th in the nation for support for higher education. Our tuitions are among the highest in the nation. David Wessel, an economist with the Brookings Institution and formerly a columnist with the Wall Street Journal, said recently, that the two building blocks for economic growth are education and infrastructure, and government should be investing in both. Government does not create jobs, but creates the ability for businesses to create jobs. New Hampshire has been living on the edge in crafting a budget for the past decade. We have a structural deficit. Our revenues do not keep up with our obligations. We have experienced lawsuits for many years because we as a state have not had the revenue needed to fund essential programs such as mental health and children in need of services or reimbursement of hospital costs for Medicaid services. We have always depended on one-time fixes and windfall revenues. It is time we face the fact that we need another source of revenue. We are one of the richest states per capita in the nation. Our burden falls on the payers of the property tax. We are the most dependent state on property taxes. This puts the heaviest burden on lower income families. Alaska is the only state with neither an income nor sales tax, and New Hampshire does not have Alaska's oil wealth. I would like to see a New Hampshire that is willing to invest in infrastructure and education and in its tourism strength, its historic places and parks. Government is not about cutting the budget. It's about providing services that citizens right. cannot provide for themselves. Thank you, Mary. Uh, I'm going to... Look to the other side here for a better view of Omer. <coughs> Omer, you, uh, your, your time is up. It's coming. There you are. Okay, thank you. Good evening. My name is Omer Ahern, Jr., and I live here in Plymouth, New Hampshire. And I ask for your vote. By profession, I am an attorney for 35 years here in the state of New Hampshire and practicing family law, business law, and real estate and probate and estate planning. And one of the things that I've noticed as uh, representing many small businesses here in New Hampshire over the last 35 years is that New Hampshire is creating more and more burdensome rules and regulations that prevent our businesses here in New Hampshire from having a, a business climate that allows them to expand, in some cases even start a business here in New Hampshire, and hire employees. So that's one of the things that I would be doing as a state representative uh, and this would be my second time around as a state rep. I served the people down in Belknap County back in 2003 and 2004 as a state rep serving on the Environment and the Agriculture Committee. That's a love that I have, a love for the environment. Uh, so I would be working uh, in the legislature with those who want to reduce government rules and regulations 
reduce government spending and reduce the tax burden on the people here in New Hampshire. As a uh, certified tree farmer, uh, I'm the fourth generation Ahern to be farming the land here in Plymouth. I was born in Plymouth and I'm still farming on a tree farm, uh, land that's been in the Ahern family since 1897. My wife Susan and I have four children. Wrap it up. <laughs> okay, I, I, I can't see, my, my eyesight is going, I can't see. So um, I uh, am also against the Northern Pass. We need to bury the lines in state-owned rights of way so that the income from the uh, right of way transmission will be coming to the people of the state of New Hampshire. And my service to the community here, I've been involved with the Friends of the PEMI, the Livermore Falls chapter, and I'm also uh, a member of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. And with all of these uh, uh, services, all of the um, volunteering that I've done for the town of Plymouth and my state of New Hampshire with the Farm Bureau, with Rotary, with the Grange, and with my church, I believe that I would bring a very vast amount of knowledge and experience to the position of state representative for this uh, area of Hebron, Holderness, and Plymouth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Omer. So now on our second round, we are each each candidate will have a, a one minute opportunity uh, to rebut or to expand. Please go ahead, Travis. Yeah, I'd just like to agree with uh, both Suzanne and Mary as well. I think um, definitely government is there to provide a social framework, not necessarily just you know, to be as small and less, you know, intrusive as possible. So I think in that light, too, I didn't really talk too much about uh, university or education spending, but I think definitely um, we need to broaden um, access to higher education and just ensure that all, um, you know, families have decent access to quality education at lower level and higher level. And, um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I just wanted to add... Uh, one of the issues with business taxes is that the reason our business tax environment is a, is a high tax burden, the wor even worse than having high business taxes for businesses is inconsistency. And in New Hampshire, we quite often will change every two years such huge amounts and that the Business and Industry Association would prefer things were just stable right where they are and we increased the business and uh, business research tax credit this year which is going to help businesses a lot. I also wanted to add some of the things I do besides being in the legislature which is I'm on the Conservation Commission in Hebron. I have worked with Omer at the Friends of the PEMI with uh, the Livermore Falls project and I'm a trustee at PEMI Baker Community Health and enjoy my work there too and I probably do a million other things but can't remember them all. <laughs> Thanks. Mary Cooney, please. Hi. I just, in addition, I could say that I support a rise in the uh, raising of the minimum wage, which might be an issue in this upcoming legislature. And as a personal um, thing that I am proud of is to have, have instrumentally gotten the county, since we're all delegates to the county government, to get them to uh, institute a, a countywide program for restorative justice for juveniles. And this keeps them out of jails in their initial rush with the law and restores their faith in human nature and and learns that, you know, people do care about them. And I'm very proud of that. And, um, and one thing about taxes, you can't reduce, reduce the business taxes, which I know Republicans have tried very hard to do, but you can't do that if you look at Kansas. You reduce that and then all of a sudden you've lost your revenue. And we have so few ways of... Um, sources of revenue. And when people say, you know, reduce the tax burden, well, the tax burden for most people is their property tax. And the state keeps um, pushing more and more on to the property tax. Thank you, Mary. Homer? Two other things I would like to mention uh, is I have, my youngest son is still in college. All four of my children attended uh, New Hampshire uh, institutions of higher learning. And one of the things that I think we need to do is uh, work out a way so that there is a less of a financial burden on our young people attending our state uh, institutions of higher learning so that when they graduate they will have less of a debt to wor uh, worry about and doing more so that they can stay here in the state of New Hampshire. All three of my older children are employed here in New Hampshire. One is a prosecuting attorney and police officer, one is an RN, 
and our third child is a fifth grade school teacher down in Concord. The last thing that I want to talk about is campaign finance reform. We do need to have campaign finance reform. For example, you had a uh, uh, union here in New Hampshire donate $25,000 to the governor uh, with regard to the Northern Pass project. The governor should be against the Northern Pass, and yet she's waffling. Um, and Thank you very much. Thank you, Omar, and thank you, panel. Uh, good luck in your, uh, in your upcoming election. Uh,